Wasabi guys, welcome back to another Magic Market Watch. This is for the first week of August. Before we get into it, thank you so much for 39,000 subs. If you appreciate the videos, please hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any. We have the return of the problem. And if you've been watching for the past couple weeks, you know what the problem is. I'm more inclined to believe this week that it is actually buyers that are doing this, that are trying to manipulate the market, rather than a TCG player website error. First card we're going to look at is Colossal Majesty from Commander 2019. You know, nothing special. It's a good card. It's not something that people were desperately trying to find. And it's been reprinted a few times, so it's not really that hard to find either. But look at that chart action. Going from well under a dollar to four in like the blink of an eye. That doesn't happen with cards like these. We all know it. This is not a four dollar uncommon. Something fishy's going on. So what I like doing now, and I don't know if this is a newer feature or they just made it more visible on their website, but you can actually look at the current price points on tcgplayer.com. For those of you who still don't know, MTG stocks where I get all the charts, that's where the information is coming from. So where you go to look at market value, it's based off of the most recent sold prices for the card, and it has a market price of $4. This is very abnormal. The buy list market price is only $0.09. Cents. So you know that there's at least a couple people who are doing this on purpose. I don't want to completely rule out that it's a TCGplayer.com error, but looking at the most recent sales all here on August 1st, with the exception of maybe a couple of these, they're all at 497. Buying one of these at a time at 497. You even see earlier there was a quantity of two. So my theory is that someone loaded up on these well beforehand, and then they listed these at higher prices because people who are honest in the market are not going to list this at $4 unless they have it graded and they're crazy. And it still wouldn't be worth it, even if you got it graded in everything. And they're doing this, I believe, because if they sell themselves about 20 or 30 of these at a much higher listed price, that the hundreds that they've bought for like 70 cents are going to be sold at the new market value to other people who don't know what's going on. So they're basically paying themselves here. That's what I believe. Again, I'm not going to completely rule out that it's an error, but we've seen this too many times now. And this information here does look a bit more organic than what we've seen. The next card is Marionette Master. We have a very similar situation. This one would be easier to fool people because it is a rare, it is a good card, it's seen play in some very powerful strategies, and the market value is significantly higher than it's ever been. Getting above $6 for the first time, I think, ever. But this is the reprint in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. We can even look at the website itself. It has a direct by TCG player option here for almost $20 near mint. I use this option, by the way. I like direct by TCG player. It allows you to have the fewest packages delivered to you, but no way is this worth $20. And I'm not here to call out sellers. I'm not here to call out any specific individuals because it might not just be one person. We look at the latest sales here. It does seem a bit fishy. Who the hell is spending $19.89 on this several times? We see the seller who's listing it there. What is going on? So I really like that TCG Player has added this. I don't know, again, if it's a new feature or that it's more pronounced on their website, but being able to look at the latest sales actually helps us understand if the market is being manipulated or maybe it's an error in their system. Again, this isn't me accusing people of market manipulation entirely, but it's getting to the point where if I see this happen again, I'm just not going to mention cards like these, which is very unfortunate because I know that you guys appreciate honesty and market watch videos you guys want to know what's taking off because of the metas you want to know what's taking off because of genuine interest and at this point i am more inclined to believe it's someone playing games we have an actual gainer here and this is pretty promising we have dockside extortionist if you were worried about the values tanking in double masters 2022 you've got nothing to fear because it's going right back up this is the reprint of course which is a bit more promising because Double Masters 2022 is still likely being printed, meaning that it's not that difficult to find. Its value is actually determined by its playability and the extreme demand for it. So $67, that's incredible. I thought that these cards were going to dip further and then eventually recover. I did not predict that within a month's time that they would all not only get back to where they were, but then gain some more value. Now we get to talk about some losers for the week. We have Archmage Emeritus. This is a great card. I've said this was a buy for a long time. Anything under $4 and you're getting tremendous value for your decks. So it's going back down closer to two, but as you can see over the past couple years, it has been floating around the two to four dollar range. I think this card does have a chance of being reprinted in a pre-con deck because it's not super expensive. It's a very low risk reprint. 
so I wouldn't look to invest in something like this personally. I'm not here to give you financial advice, I'm really here to give you good value options, recommend good value cards, and I'm telling you this is a good value card if you want to play Magic the Gathering. So look out for this one, I think if you've ever wanted to buy a good value card, maybe even an underrated source of card draw. You can't go wrong with Archmage Emeritus. Then we have Mayhem Devil from War of the Spark. This card also hasn't been reprinted. Its chart has been in the $4 to $6 range for some time now, but more recently it is going back to what looks like to be a support level at 4. It's a great card, but it is also a huge reprint candidate for Precon decks. I think $4 is going to break. I think it's going to go even lower. I've noticed this over the past couple of weeks when looking at the market values on the weekly, that we're not seeing any massive gainers. We're not seeing anything outside of market manipulation that looks impressive. That's why I didn't really have any actual gainers outside of Dockside Extortionist that I felt comfortable talking about. Then we have Stolen Strategy, the card from Battle Bond that exploded in value right after the release of Prosper Tomebound. If you like Atali's trigger, this is very similar to a tally, but instead of having to attack, this happens at the beginning of your upkeep, so I think it offers you a bit more flexibility in how you play your turn. You do still have to spend mana on these spells, but I do like how this fed right into that Prosper Tonebound strategy. It's been going down since its reprint, to no one's surprise. It is now getting closer to $5. And then we're going to wrap it up here talking about Morphic Pool. We have a lot of large losers. This is what I've been pointing out here over the past couple weeks. A lot of cards that are losing a significant percentage. And while it does have a lot to do with reprints, again, Morphic Pool, another reprinted card that's losing value, it is worth pointing out that when we flip it over to the market gainer side of things, you're maybe seeing $2 cards becoming $3 cards. It's nothing that substantial. This is a card that over the past couple months has lost about $15 worth of value. And it's not a shocker, I mean, we know this whenever lands like these get reprinted, the originals are not going to hold their value. It's one of those things, though, that if it goes a couple years without another reprint, it could go right back up, so I'm not that worried about the value here. These are great lands, they're staples, and pretty much every commander deck if you're playing two or more colors. Morphic Pool just happens to be one of the more valuable ones, so the difference here is quite noticeable. So anyway, that's going to do it for the Magic Market Watch for August 4th. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also, let me know how I should handle these cards like Colossal Majesty and Marionette Master, where the sales just seem so inorganic. They seem so manipulated. Do you want me to talk about those? Because they could be interesting to some of you. I also just want to present honest information. I want to present what is actually happening because of interest in the market, not because someone's taking some random, uncommon, or rare that's dirt cheap, they're buying a bunch of it, and then they're selling the same card to themselves for like 20 or $30. My thought when doing this is maybe eventually getting to the point where either MTG Stocks finds a way around this or TCGplayer.com finds a way around this with their market values because that's what is important to us if we're looking to find genuine interest in cards. We want to see what people are actually buying, but in this case, it's entirely possible that there are people who are recognizing how easy it is to get a card to trend on a website like mtgstocks.com and manipulate the market, getting people to spend over what the actual average is. That's what the charts tell me at least. Well, anyway, Commander Void here signing off. You will have a wonderful day.